you are about to experience the best free Twitter marketing course created in 2019. Here with me, Jerry Banfield. Are you interested in learning how to use Twitter as a beginner and to actually make your time and energy you spend in Twitter worthwhile? I've been on Twitter seven years. I have 90 plus thousand followers. My tweets get four plus thousand impressions every 24 hours. I'll show you what I've learned about Twitter. What you're going to love in this is that I'll show you both the things I recommend doing and that I'm doing and the things I've made mistakes doing that I recommend don't do that'll save you a ton of wasted time and energy if you don't do them and I'll give you the newest thing that I'm looking at doing to take my Twitter marketing to the next level. This is totally for free. You can help me if you'd like more videos. I'm a full-time YouTuber. Will you please subscribe on YouTube? Hit the subscribe button. Turn those notifications on. I do three new videos a day that I imagine you'll absolutely love. You'll find really helpful. Help us reach 5,000 subscribers. That's all I ask to give you the very best information I know about Twitter after seven years of experience. Let's go take a look at my Twitter profile right now. I'll show you the key tools I recommend first. So one of the key things you'll want to do on Twitter is to set up automation, to share your new blog posts, or for me, my new YouTube videos, blog posts, and podcast episodes. I share all of these directly on Twitter using the following two tools. Number one is Zapier. I use Zapier to automate certain platforms publishing. For example, I have a podcast to Twitter zap that I do whenever I have a new podcast episode that comes out it automatically creates an image tweet on Twitter that looks just like this it gives me massive space in the news feed it gives a link to my podcast and it gives a podcast title automation in this way is essential on Twitter to reduce the amount of time and energy you put out and allow anyone following you to always get the newest of what you create I have another automation on Twitter to do a YouTube video published to Twitter image tweet. So I'll show you what that looks like. Every time I put out a new YouTube video, I automatically get the high resolution thumbnail using Zapier from the YouTube video and I put the title of it with a direct link to watch the video. This gives me traffic from Twitter every day over to every new YouTube video and it gives me the ability to not actually have to do anything on my end. Now, I also use social media auto posting and scheduling plugin for WordPress blogs named Blog to Social. If you'd like to help me earn and visit the link directly in the description, you'll find a link where you can help me earn when you buy Blog to Social using my link. I discovered blog to social because I was looking to be able to auto post on Twitter and what I actually got was something much more helpful blog to social is what I use on my WordPress site now instead of automatically scheduling posts when they come out what I do is this I have posts that are scheduled on all my social media platforms every time they come out on my blog and then those that give me the ability to post to all the other, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to, uh, it was one other one on there. I just do this, this is straight from the heart, no script, I know this stuff. So this is how we are delivering this. Now, a key thing that you want to do for sharing on Twitter is to make sure you get some good hashtags in here. Now this one was not shared correctly with the blog to social. I'll get with my editor about that. It, it didn't come out right because the videos are just coming in here, but there should be an image tweet. So the ideal way to share something is to get it out in an image tweet. However, this is nice. If you just share a link like this on desktop, you get all these hashtags, then when you click on the video, the video will come up directly like this. But if you look farther back, I shared all these on my posts with image tweets. So there's different ways of sharing tweets and your tweets look different. Thus, the basic suggestion I have to start with, I've given you a really quick, we've dove straight in to the tools I use to do marketing on Twitter. I'll slow down for a minute. The number one thing I recommend to do on Twitter if you're new, is to actually use Twitter as a user. Now, this sounds really like dumb, like, God, that's so obvious. Like, shouldn't you use Twitter 
as a user? Well, when I first started trying to do my own Twitter profile and to do marketing on Twitter, I actually hadn't done hardly anything on Twitter as an actual user. And this helped me to make a lot of stupid mistakes. Like, for example, I'll tell you one thing not to do, follow for follow. I did follow for follow to build up the majority of my followers and I've consistently been, and then I paid $500 to unfollow all of them on there. So now I don't even know how many actual followers I have versus followers that I've got for real. Thus, I recommend actually use Twitter as a real user. And I recommend do it on your mobile device. Use your mobile device, follow a few people on Twitter, and just learn how things come up on Twitter so you understand the receiving end of what you're trying to give. And then you can see, as a regular user, it'd seem insane to do follow for follow because your newsfeed would just be spammed with all these people you don't really care about or know. Thus, I highly recommend do not engage in any kind of artificial follower inflation behaviors. I know these are really tempting because you want to show people how important you are on Twitter when someone looks for you, especially if you, like me, have got a big followings in other places. Just take the followers that are given to you organically and uh, be satisfied to serve the people that are following you and do a good job following them and you will be able to build a following. There's an important thing at this point we want to look at in the news feed to see how content actually gets shared. So there's a few different ways. One of the main ways people are browsing Twitter is on the news feed. And what I'll do next is help you learn the user experience on Twitter so you understand better how to give. I started out really quick showing you the tools that I use to publish on Twitter, but let's back up a little bit, look at the user experience. Now, I'm following, for example, the ETC kid on Twitter, so I see his tweets. Then I think, is that a, yeah, that's a promoted one. So that came up, I'm actually following her. So that came up now when I heart her tweet like this, it comes up, it can come up in the news feed for people following me. So every time I hard to tweet, everyone following me potentially can see the tweet that I've just hearted, which is a very important thing to keep in mind. If you want people to heart your tweets, then uh, you, you give some hearts out to others. But at the same time, it's annoying to follow people who just go through and hit heart on almost every tweet because then you get a bunch of useless tweets there's just too many so use your hearts in moderation as you can see right here this then there's the retweet option now the retweet shares this as if it's your own tweet to your followers now the retweet is much more likely in many cases to actually appear in the twitter feed thus you can see i'm following harsh uh Grerewal, i guess and i'm not actually following shannon plante here but her tweet appears in my feed because he retweeted it. So a retweet is the best help you can give to someone. And you can see, here's an example, like I don't follow real Donald Trump or pay any attention to politics, but you can see two of my friends follow. And so that's how this actually appeared in my news feed, even though there, there's a thread attached to this, even though I don't follow Donald Trump. These two of my follower uh, people I follow do, and then this just appears in my feed somehow. Then there's also a who to follow on here, but almost all the time Twitter just recommends people that have a lot of followers already, and well, they'll have some more. So don't worry about how to get in here. You may be able to get in here if you very carefully follow people you're interested in and other people are doing the same, then you may get some suggested followers out of that. But realistically, as with a lot of things in this life, you look at who to follow. It's There's, there's just verified accounts of people who already have a lot of followers who can have more on there. So just kind of be okay with that instead of resenting it. You'll see, here's an example of the heart I talked about. You'll see harsh liked this or hit the heart on it so this comes up even and this comes up and i think i'm also following this blog so if somebody hearts something 
And uh, if one of my follower, if one person I'm following hearts something from somebody else I'm following, that's got a more likely shot to come up in my feed. Now you can see on here, this one comes up before for, uh, you can see the, how big of a reach, how, how much space in the news feed this gets when you've got a videos. So if you, uh, if you can get a vertical video, this is a really good way to get a huge impression. As you can see, if you look through the news feed, most all of the content is what I will call rich media. So they're images or videos. Almost everything that's in my feed. Now this is this is the first one that's actually a just a straight up link. So I will heart this because I think that's actually Michelle sharing my own video. So you see, this is the first actual link that came up. And this is a very important thing to learn about Twitter marketing right up front. The main things that get shared and in the top of the news feed, that is, are these rich media. So videos, pictures, and now sometimes just a straight up text will get featured in there. And if you share a link, sometimes with the main things that come up in the news feed are these kind of big format posts. But you can still, like for example, Tim Ferriss has this tweet come up that's really short. You can do really well with a short text tweet also. So what I recommend and what I do is I experiment with lots of different formats on my tweets. I mostly do the image and picture tweets, but sometimes I'll do a short text tweet. Other times I publish videos directly to my Twitter feed and that the video is an ideal format. But the problem with the videos, videos have to be under two minutes and 30 seconds currently on videos, which really stinks. So one thing that is nice about Twitter is that you can discover new things. If you follow people, for example, J.R. Swab, who I follow, he introduced me to a podcasting platform named Anchor.fm just by hitting the heart button on one of their tweets. This is some of the big power you get in Twitter. And when you see how Twitter works like this, you can see the value of posting really helpful content on Twitter. You want to post the kind of things people will heart, retweet and comment on because as almost all of us want to know, how do I get more followers? How do I get more reach? You post stuff that's really helpful to people. And that's what I try and do all the time on my Twitter feed is post stuff that's helpful to people. And just posting stuff that's helpful to people doesn't mean you're going to get instantly a bunch of retweets, a bunch of new followers, but just doing that every day, every day on Twitter repeatedly. If you look at my notifications in a minute, I get new followers almost every day without doing follow for follow just by posting things that are helpful and then people share. As you can see, another video in here, we're continuing to learn how the Twitter feed works. And sure, I'll heart Michelle again because they shared another of my YouTube videos. And this is something that's helpful also. One of the ideas I'm thinking of doing for the future of how do I expand my Twitter marketing efforts with by paying. I've tried some Twitter ads. I may try those again. One thing I like the idea of is doing some kind of micro influencer marketing to pay for tweets like this to just have someone share one of my YouTube videos and just pay for a tweet like, hey, write a tweet about my YouTube video. I, I could probably pay a very small amount for it and then that's all organic reach. It gets out to other people's followings and especially I pay the same person 10, 20, 30 times to write tweets about different videos, different blog posts of mine. Then I've got a good chance of them knowing exactly, of them getting connected with their followers and starting discussions on Twitter. So one of the main ways people use Twitter especially on the mobile app, is just browsing through the feed. But there's one other thing you need to understand about Twitter that is very important for learning how Twitter works. What, and the question for this is, what does Twitter do really well? Twitter does really well allowing anyone to see real-time conversations about what's happening. For example, if I search game, Game of Thrones in here. This is a one way I actually use Twitter. So after the Game of Thrones season finale, it was fun to look through and look at the tweets from what people were saying about Game of Thrones. So this is one of the ways 
that Twitter is most effective. People often, if there's some kind of happening story or like a season finale of something or anything that people are talking about, Twitter can be really good for looking for the conversation about it. And this, I had some fun on Twitter the night of the season finale. I just searched for Game of Thrones and just watched all the discussion about it. And the discussion was incredible. And Twitter is one of the best places to just see what people are talking about in real time. For example, if I want to see what people are talking about with Bitcoin, I can just search for Bitcoin and then there's top news in here. And I also can go over here and search latest. Latest can be really helpful if you just want to see the absolute newest on something. So I've searched this and uh, I get the latest tweets on these. Literally, I can see what people are talking about in nearly real time. We can see exactly who's posting. And if you want to find some people that are talking in your niche, if you want to find some people you might like relationships with, for example, sometimes you can search for people talking about things and start commenting on their tweets and begin building a relationship. Now, this tends to work best. You can do some really niche searches, for example, I just looked on here, I looked on Steam, and uh, you can see the newest tweets directly about Steam, and the more niche you get, the more you can find a discussion about it. So I can search for myself, I can search for, I just spelled my name wrong, let's go! Alright, so I searched for Jerry Banfield, I can see exactly what the latest people are talking about on Jerry Banfield. I can see my tweet, for example, and now I can see everyone that's talking about or mentioning Jerry Banfield. For example, I can see this comment here. That's a reply to me. I can see all my posts and I search for latest. I can see everyone that's talked about anything related to Jerry Banfield. This means it's very easy to follow a specific topic. You can check out discussion. And if you do something like latest, you can just scroll back and see all of the all of the conversation topics here. So this is what Twitter does really well, is allowing you to find real-time conversations about topics. And if you want to build a real following, that's not just about numbers, but that's about meaningful engagements, what I see as the opportunity to do that is engaging in conversations. If you have a specific topic, like I can search for Euthena here, my new platform, I can see exactly what people are talking about related to Euthena. And then 